Hi! So this video is gonna be gross for some and I have seen these videos a lot over the past few years although what I'm about to share isn't ordinary or conventional at all and some people might actually find it weird. Anyway, this has been something that's been asked for a couple of years now. And this is also the final video request for the month of March, requested by Jenny. Now before we begin, I'm going to preface this by saying that I do not have perfect skin. It doesn't run on both sides of my family. I also have this skin condition called keratosis pilaris, which is also basically known as chicken skin. Which you can see over here, I also have a wound here. <laughs> I have chicken skin, which is also why I wore this top, just to show you guys. I have also never been to a dermatologist, so I've never received any clinical facial treatments or procedures. Regardless, I still do get compliments on my complexion and here's how I did that even when I didn't have money. But first, before we proceed so that everything makes sense, I'm going to have to let you in on my thought process so you know why I decided to do what I did. I want things to genuinely work in the long run. What that means is that I want something that doesn't just touch on the surface level. I don't want it to be just a superficial fix. I don't want it to be temporary. I also wanted this to be something that would promote long-term health and nourishment. So let's start with how I started taking care of my skin when I had absolutely no money. When I started this whole self-care journey, I knew that I didn't have to just take care of myself from the inside, but I had to do it from the outside as well. However, I didn't really have the resources needed to buy like an arsenal of skincare products and materials. So what I did was I just used all the things that were already available in the house. And my routine back then was to cleanse. And my routine back then was to detox, cleanse, and stimulate the lymph nodes. Every morning, I would drink a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in warm water. And if there was honey, I would take another tablespoon or two of that to make the taste more bearable. The apple cider vinegar that I like using is Bragg's Raw and Unfiltered Apple Cider Vinegar with the Mother. I found this to be an effective way to clear my skin up from the inside. I also noticed that when I started doing that, even when I had my period, like now, I didn't get as bad of a breakout anymore as I did before. Actually, this is the pimple that I've gotten. So are like these little spots, but that's minor compared to the way that my face used to flare up. So much so that I used to get such big pimples here that my glasses wouldn't even sit on my face. It would be like that. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Then on days when I would like to clean my face even more thoroughly, I would use warm water and a microfiber towel. So the way that microfiber towels are structured allows the fibers to actually grip onto and lift dirt and debris, which is also why it's such an effective cleaning tool, even for the most delicate of surfaces. I also noticed that when I started using a microfiber towel, the rough spots on my nose disappeared. The really bad texture that I used to always have, like when people would run their finger down my nose. I honestly don't know why they do that, but they do. It doesn't feel as rough and bumpy anymore. Actually, it's quite smooth. And then I do the Tanica face massage. Now the Tanica face massage stimulates the lymph nodes so that excess toxins and fluids get flushed out of the face. There are various online tutorials about this. There are even instructions done by Yukuko Tanaka herself. I used to do this twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. It does take an investment of time and energy to both learn how to do it and then to actually take time out of your day to do it. But the results and the benefits will honestly be visible if you just stay consistent. 
Veronica face massage helped brighten and even out my complexion. It might be painful and uncomfortable though, especially in areas where buildup is concentrated. When it comes to moisturizing my face, I would use whatever moisturizer was available at home if there were any. Now let's move on to how the routine changed when I started having some money to spend. I would still do the same practices that I did back when I had the no budget routine, but this time I would tone, I would moisturize, then I would stimulate the lymph nodes. Oh, also I should mention that for the microfiber towel in the warm water, it works so well at picking up dirt and debris and excess oiliness that I wouldn't even need extra product just to remove waterproof mascara whenever I do use it. It's really an effective way to get your face clean. Okay, so now that I have some money to use, I started buying affordable products. I would buy organic face wash that came from local businesses, although there wasn't really any, I, I mean, out of straight out of my head, I can't remember the things that I used to use just because none of them really stuck out to me as being more effective or as effective as just using a microfiber towel and warm water. But after that, after I do clean my face, I would then use a toner. Some people would say that it's not necessary, especially if you use witch hazel. But for me, I found out that this helped balance my skin more. It helped reduce my breakouts and it helped make sure that I'm dewy, not oily. The toner that I used to use is the Witch Hazel Toner by Salitique. Salitech? You can buy it in what sense. After I tone, I would use the Under Eye Brightening Serum. I have dark circles and deep set eyes. So if I'm not wearing concealer like right now, it really looks dark under my eyes. Then I'd moisturize my face and my body using cold pressed grapeseed oil that I buy from the supermarket. On days where I need a little more healing, that's when I whip up the tallow. Tallow is basically rendered animal fat that has been mixed in with other oils or substances to make it into a spreadable paste. This is the ingredient found in the scar treatment called Zebo de Macho. I've read studies from the Weston A. Price Foundation that documented how tallow is compatible with our skin cells biology. The logic behind this is that there is no substance that could do the skin's job better than the skin itself. So the skin needs to be given the materials it can to properly regulate and heal. And you can aid that by feeding it tallow. And other substances that are genuinely compatible with the skin's biology. When I have cuts and bruises, I actually meant to say cuts or scratches. Or burns like right now. <laughs> I'm really sunburnt. I found that tallow helped heal my skin faster. It also helped smooth down and balance out the severe discoloration I used to have on my arms thanks to my KP. And it would genuinely contribute to the health of your skin. So even if you don't use it every single day, when you do this, no white streaks form. If you've got a baby in the house that's suffering from a diaper rash or have minor skin irritations, tallow helps alleviate that. Then if I need something heavier, like for my lips, for example, because I have chronically or I had chronically dry, chapped and bleeding lips, especially throughout college. Yeah, I, I'd be wounded a lot. I'd use lanolin to help. Lanolin is a wax derived from the sebaceous glands of wool bearing animal like sheep. And just like tallow, it's compatible with our skin's biology. Which means that tallow and lanolin can actually penetrate the moisture barrier of the skin. Unlike most commercialized lotions and creams which only sit at the top layer. So over time, the constant usage of these products would either dry out your skin or cause you to constantly depend on them. I only use tallow and lanolin in the evenings when I don't have to meet or see people because the smell is... It isn't amazing. Lanolin especially. When I first got my tub of lanolin, I opened it and... Whew! 
to me it smelled alive but at the same time it also smelled like it was dying in a gas station that was leaking gas it just wasn't pleasant however it was highly effective i have used lanolin also for immediate relief like when i accidentally burned my skin like that time i picked up the rice cooker and forgot it was still hot or during that time when i had an allergic reaction that caused to die because it was quarantine time i had nothing i could do so i just decided to dye my eyebrows and i started blistering and wounding and it was so painful it was burning and i used aloe vera to cool it down but also to seal it off i used lanolin and in less than seven days my skin healed and i came out of the ordeal without even a single scar since this happened during the peak of the pandemic i couldn't exactly send myself to the hospital unless it was a truly life-threatening situation I also used lanolin to help me during the time that I took my first and unfortunately only due to the pandemic laser hair removal session for my underarm and my skin started like cracking. It was it was drying up. It was getting so sore, so uncomfortable. And before the clinic even texted me to tell me that I should deeply moisturize, I already slathered a thick layer of lanolin the night before and the next day my armpits were okay. Now, because of the highly pungent smell of lanolin and tallow, despite the fact that they are so amazing, I only use grapeseed oil in the morning because it's scentless. An affordable alternative to using tallow or lanolin, if that's not your thing, is petroleum jelly. I like the Baby Flow soothing and relaxing variant, petroleum jelly. I also use it on days when I don't feel like wearing mascara, but I want to enhance my curled lashes. So after I curl my lashes, I just put on a thin coat. It acts like a clear mascara that makes your lashes darker and glossier. Now, when I started having more money to spend, I did start upgrading the materials that I use for my routine. Again, I took the same practices and products that I use from the previous routines, but this time, after detoxing, cleansing, toning, I'd put serum, moisturizer, sun protection, supplement, and I'd hydrate. <laughs> Sounds like a lot. I've been looking at buying facial products already, but I haven't yet tried any out, so I wouldn't be able to share that yet. I still do use the microfiber and warm towel duo that i have been using for years now except this time i also practice double cleansing now if i don't already reach for whatever oils or balms that i've already made i do tend to go for the pons cleansing balm then after i double cleanse with that i rinse my face and wipe off the excess oiliness using a microfiber towel and warm water when it comes to toning I now use Thayer's Witch Hazel, which has more ingredients than the Celtic Witch Hazel toner that I used to use. And I would put it in a little atomizer so I could use it as a face mist or as a means to wet the crystal deodorant that I use or as a feminine spray since it is a natural antiseptic without any alcohol in it. After that, I would sometimes use carrot seed oil during the day, but at night, I tend to use rosehip oil. Now, the trick to knowing that you have good rosehip oil is if it smells a bit woodsy, to me at least, or a bit woody. It definitely shouldn't smell like crayons because that's when you know that it's gone rancid or has expired. And has a deep amber, orange, or red color to it. That's when you know you've got good quality rosehip oil. Some people dub this as a gentle alternative to retinol, and I honestly love the effect that it has on my skin. Then after I use any serums, I like to seal it in with a little bit of moisturizer. I use two different kinds, the lighter ones and the heavier ones. So the lighter ones I like to use when it's too hot. Aloe vera is my go-to. Not only does it moisturize, but it helps heal, especially for sunburns like this. And then for the heavier moisture, that's when the usual tallow and lanolin come in. But now that I have money, I bought Lanolips. Each tube of this costs 
800 to 1000 depending on where you buy it and if it's on sale. This honestly smells so good and it's my go-to if I'm out on a date or you know your partner's coming over or you're going to have a sleepover because it still retains all of its healing properties but it doesn't knock anyone out with its smell. Here are some photos I found of myself for reference. This is circa 2018 to early 2019. I cannot find though that actual pic. My lips had just freshly bled. The wound was so pronounced. But that used to be a common occurrence where I would literally taste and feel the blood on my teeth because my lips have cracked open again. Now that I have more money to spend, I have been buying raw materials. So I've been making my own little concoctions that allowed me to start using tallow without the bad smell. That same little concoction is also what I use when I would like to level up the hydration of a moisturizer without wearing a full-on cream. If you're not into using those kind of things, one thing that I actually really like for heavy moisturization is a product called Glycelid and it's something that I found and started using when I was living abroad. And it honestly saved my skin and helped me through the winters when skin usually dries up and starts cracking. Then for sun protection, that's why I tend to use carrot seed oil sometimes in the morning when I have. I don't currently have it. Because it does have some sun protecting properties, although it is not a viable substitute for sunblock. For sunblock, I only tend to use sunblock when I have to swim. I still get sunburned anyway. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I like using a UV-coated umbrella. The one I used was actually a bit pricey when I first bought it, but I did see the difference. I would be walking out in BGC, the sun would be so hot, but directly under the umbrella, it's so much cooler. Then, I take supplements. The supplements that I take specifically for my skin are silica and fish oil. As these are the supplements that help the skin produce collagen and omega-3s, both of which being vital to the health of the skin. This is the silica supplement that I usually take, however, it was out of stock, so I bought another bottle, which could be found in Watson's. And since I also finished the brand of fish oil that I used to take, I started to take cod liver oil. And I'm thinking of alternating that and going back to fish oil once I finish my cod liver oil. Now, other people like to put vitamin C oil on their face, but for me, I prefer to ingest it. This is the vitamin C that I take and I alternate it with cranberry pills. So if you're like me and during your periods you find that you grow very pale, I found that taking iron supplements has really helped my complexion. I swap out my multivitamins for these iron supplements during my period and I continue taking them for up to two days after my period has ended. Then another thing that I do is I drink a minimum of 2 liters of water per day. I bought a 40 ounce Hydro Flask after using the Hydro Flask of my friend and realizing that it helped me drink more water. Prior to me buying the Hydro Flask, I would just buy whatever water containers or bottles I could find at Tabi Tabi, which were usually 500 or 700 milliliters. And the last one that I had was actually only 90 pesos from Novu. So now I have a means of constantly staying hydrated. Even before I bought a Hydro Flask, I would constantly keep my water bottles in my bag. So throughout class or when I'm going out, I have a means to continuously stay hydrated. Now with the Hydro Flask though, I do find that I tend to take it <laughs> everywhere with me. You'll know I'm in a room if my Hydro Flask is there. And it helps make drinking water easy. I read somewhere that every time you take a bath, or a shower, you get dehydrated. So right after I get out of the shower, I drink from my Hydro Flask. Also for the overall cleansing of my body, I like to use the Ivory Bar Soap in the Aloe Vera variant. If I want to exfoliate, I usually use these exfoliating gloves that I got from Watson's or an Italy towel. By the way, if I'm in a place where I'd be more prone to get bitten by mosquitoes, I skip any other moisturizer and I just go straight to the mosquito repellent. And lastly, besides the usual of getting enough sleep, cutting out toxicity so you're not as stressed, I don't smoke. I don't do recreational drugs. 
and I don't get drunk. This July 2021 will officially be my second year mark of being sober and my skin has thanked me for it. I hope you find this insightful and if you did, feel free to like and share it. Till next time.